In this third video, we're going to talk about conditional statements. Now, you've probably used conditional statements in when you programmed, right? When anytime you use an if statement, that's a conditional statement. Mathematically, there are also conditional statements that are very closely related to programming if statements. So we've seen and and or and not before. Now conditional statement is going to add on a new operator. So this is going to give us a new operator written as an arrow. Let's see how that works. So a statement of the form if P then Q can also be read as P implies Q and is written P arrow Q. Now this is one of the most difficult things in this class and students really struggle with this concept and we're going to spend a bunch of time on it, not a lot in this video, but at, further on as we get to new more videos we're going to keep working with it. So right now I just want to introduce this idea and to introduce it I'm going to give an example. So, suppose you applied for a job and your boss says, if you show up for, mo for work Monday morning, then you will get the job. And so this is an if-then statement. If you show up for work Monday morning, then you will get the job. Now, under what circumstances are you justified in saying that the person spoke falsely? Under what circumstances would they have lied to you? Right? Under what circumstances is a above sentence false? So let's think about this. If you show up to work and you get the job, was the person lying to you? No. Right? That's exactly that's exactly what they said would happen. If you show up for work Monday morning, then you will get the job. You show up, you get the job. So that's fine. They're not lying to you. How about if you showed up and you didn't get the job? Well, that seems like a lie. Right? If I if your boss tells you come come to work Monday morning and you'll have the job and then you show up bright and early Monday morning and he says never mind. Well, that is an example of where the boss is lying to you. So this is a lie. What about if you don't show up Monday morning, but you still gave, got the job? Was he lying to you? No. Um, let's look at this last one. If you don't show up and you did not get the job, was he lying to you? No. All he said is that if you show up, then you'll get the job. He said nothing about what would happen if you didn't show up. That was never part of the conversation. Right? The only part of the conversation was what will happen if you do show up. So these are really the only things that were promised. Let's get rid of these down here. What happens in these two scenarios was talked about. What on earth? And in one of these scenarios, he was telling the truth, and in the other, the boss was lying. Now, what does it mean then if you don't show up and still got the job? Well, he wasn't lying to you because he said nothing about what would happen if you don't show up. So this is actually a true statement. Similarly, if you don't show up and you don't get the job, he wasn't lying to you. He said nothing about what would happen if you don't show up. Right? So there was no lie. So this is also a true statement. So this is very counterintuitive much of the, to many people. Um, another great example is what if I tell you that if 
your grade is 90% is greater than or equal to 90%, then you'll get an A in my class. Can you come to me with an 85% and say, why didn't you give me an A? You lied to me. No, I said nothing about that. All I said is that if you got bigger, greater than a 90%, then you'll get an A. I could choose to round your score up and give you an A either, I'll, anyway, and that wouldn't be a lie. Or I could say, no way, you didn't meet my requirement, and so you don't get an A, and that's not going to be a lie either. Right. So what this means is that these statements are either true or false, right? We saw that the first, third, and last statement were all true, and only the second one was false, indicating a lie. And what that means is that this has a truth table. So we can create a truth table for this. One last point. Um, these two statements might seem odd that I'm saying that they are true. Um, these are known as vacuously true. Right? They're true sort of by default. You can think of it as they are des uh, defined to be true. And we're going to talk more about vacuously true here in a bit. But we define since these statements weren't included in our original conversation, since this first part was never talked about, we don't know anything, and so we're just going to say, well, whatever happens, it's a true statement. Okay, so back to our truth table. If I tell you, looking at this row, if I tell you that if you show up to work Monday morning and you show up to work Monday morning, so P is true and Q is true, then the statement is true because I give you a job. Or if you show up, how do I want to say this? If you show up to work Monday morning, then you'll get the job and you both show up and you get the job, then the statement was true. If you show up and I don't give you the job, then my statement was false. If you don't show up and I give you the job, my statement is vacuously true. And if you don't show up and I don't give you the job, once again, I wasn't lying, so this was tr a true statement. And again, recall that these two are known as vacuous truths. Um, another way of thinking about this is that P implies Q means no more and no less than that it is not case that P is true and Q is false. So if P is true, uh, it doesn't work pretty much. It doesn't work only in the scenario where P is true and Q is false. This is the only time it's false, every other time it's true. So this is another way of thinking about an implication. Okay, we're going to talk more about these in the next video. Let's look a little bit more closely at vacuous truths. Now, I always get the pronunciation for this wrong, so I apologize in advance. But if I make a statement, if Santa Claus is the president of GCC, 
Then Cthulhu lives in Phoenix, Arizona. So we can break this down. This is our P. And this is our Q. So again, I have a P, if P, then Q situation. Now, we know that the president of GCC is not Santa Claus, right? So we know that this first part is false. So P is false. So what does that mean about Cthulhu living in Phoenix, Arizona? Do we know anything? No, in this situation we know absolutely nothing. And that is because if the, remember we have P implies Q here, or if P then Q. If P is false, we know nothing about Q, so it can be anything. So, because the hypothesis, which is that first part, is false, we can infer nothing about the conclusion, which is that second part. So it turns out this weird statement is true. Right? The entire statement is defined as true. And again, if we were to do a little truth table here, if we, I keep drawing these and it keeps getting rid of them. If this is P and this is Q, let's do our truth table. So we have P, Q, and P implies Q. Okay, as we saw from the last page, P implies Q. If they're both true, this is true. If P is false and Q is false, or if P is true and Q is false, this is a false statement. And in these last two, these are vacuously true. So, the question is, is Santa Claus the president of GCC? Mm, no, right? The president of GCC is not Santa Claus, which means we fall into one of these two rows because P, we know, is false. So I don't even know anything about Cthulhu. I don't know if he does live in Phoenix or if he doesn't live in Phoenix. But I do know that the statement itself is a true statement. So this statement, as I said before, this is true.